What's up, YouTube? Man, I just cannot believe that a Manstad engineering windshield has not been reviewed yet for the F6B. So I'm here to do that for you today. And first off, I'm going to just tell you, this thing just looks a lot better than I thought it was going to look. I mean, from the front, it looks like a regular shield. Um, this is not the lowest position. Let me, let me first out tell you my stats, okay? As you can tell already, I'm pretty excited about this screen. I'm going to share with you why. Um, let's share stats. Six foot tall, 33 inseam. And boy, does that all come into play when you're talking about a windscreen and what kind of protection you're going to get. Um, the re I think they, re they, they suggested on MadSat Engineering for the F6B to be looking at a 13-inch shield so you're able to look over the top of it and still get that wind kicking up over your helmet versus on your helmet. And they suggested a 13-inch shield for somebody six foot. Well, let me tell you where I'm coming from. And if you've looked at motorcycle windshields, which everybody who buys an F6B, that's the first thing you got to replace. Some people like the wind in the face and more of the open road type style riding. I'm not one of those guys. I want to be able to hear my radio. I want to be comfortable under the helmet. I don't want to hear a bunch of helmet noise. And I buy cheap helmets. I don't buy showy. I buy Hawks. Okay. <laughs> this is my helmet. It was $139 module with Bluetooth. But I absolutely love it, except for it's loud under a regular traditional shield. I came from the bagger shield. You know what I'm talking about if you've been shopping shields. The bagger shield 19-inch convertible has a smoke on the bottom, the clear on the top. I've got one in the other room. I'm not going to get a picture of it. Nothing fancy on this thing. You know what I'm talking about if you've investigated shields. Um, I've been through all of them, okay? I had a gold wing before this. I tried out the F4 with no vent. Horrible. F4 plus 4. It was like a totally different bike. Uh, I couldn't get, uh, I couldn't get the... Um, it felt like a truck going down the road. That's what I can, again, I didn't have the vent in it. I know a lot of people stand by their F4s, plus fours, plus twos, minus twos. I couldn't stand it. It just changed the whole riding of the motorcycle. Um, but I didn't have the vent in, and I know that's a really important piece. So that's probably where I failed there. Sent the F4 plus four back, got a Taka recurve. I'm talking about for my GL1800. Got a Taka recurve, left that one on because that one seemed to do really well uh, for that GL1800. I can't remember. I got another video. If you search my videos, you could probably find it on the Taka recurve. Uh, sold the Goldwing GL1800, bought the F6B, best decision I ever made in my life for my riding style. And I don't do a whole lot of long touring, but I can go three, four, five days, uh, cover the same amount of road with this and so comfortable on your rear end. <clears throat> Back to the shield. I've been through, what did I try? Um, boy, and, and my mind's slipping right now here, but the one, I've tried the one where the it scoops up really big, you know what I'm talking about, and they come in the smoked, and that was really good. Gosh, I hate that I can't think of the name of it. But I tried one of those, and I think I tried it at the 14-inch, put it on, took it off the day I put it on, and sent it back. Just went with a clear view, 16 inch, uh, light tint. I love the looks of the windshield. Um, put it on, it was worse than my 19 inch uh, um, bagger shield when it comes to buffeting. Pulled that off the, the, the three minutes after I had it on the bike, sent it back. Be careful on that, guys. Clearview is in Colorado. I'm in the East Coast, I'm in Charlotte. If you try a windshield out, you better take in consideration what that cost is going to be to ship that thing back. It cost me $41 at the, at the regular post office to mail that thing back to Colorado, and I got hit with another $28 
that they charged me that they deducted from my refund. I paid $70 to try out a shield. I'm here to tell you right now, on the record, get the Madstad. Don't do what I did. <laughs> Don't try any other shield because this thing is phenomenal. Okay, let that sink in for a minute. <laughs> uh, you know I'm excited. People know that all my videos, when I get excited about a product, uh, I'm excited. And I'm not going to hold back. This thing, the minute I took it out on a 30 minute, when I had the clear view, I was only going through the neighborhood at 30 miles an hour. Boom, I could already tell that that wind was still hitting the top third of my helmet. That's what I try to, I'm trying to, that was my main thing. The second thing was to get my passenger comfortable. Now, to be honest, I'm excited, ramped up on this. I haven't tried a passenger on the back, but I'm almost 95% sure she's going to be a static back there compared to what she was dealing with. She had to lean forward to get out of that wind tunnel on the 19 inch. She, that, she, that, she said it was some of the worst turbulence that she experienced. The 19, the bagger shield did good for me. Okay. I've had it on there for about 10 months. Okay, and it seemed to be okay, but when I was taking trips or I get out on the highway, you get, I'm talking when you're out behind in the, on the highway and you see semi trucks, you know, a, a quarter of a mile in front of you, you believe it or not, you're feeling the turbulence of those things, or I did. Okay, you know when you're on a smooth highway with no semis in front of you compared to when you're, you're looking at these things uh, down the road, even at a quarter mile, that they're breaking up and shifting the wind, and boy, did I feel it. <clears throat> so that was two things that I wanted to get rid of. I wanted to get rid of that noise out of my top, hit the top third of the helmet. I wanted to get my wife more comfortable on the back of the motorcycle. <clears throat> the first one's completely solved. So let me tell you, first of all, a little bit about this, um, how to put this screen on. Okay, now the instructions, I guess that's, if there's a, if there's a minus, it's the instructions, okay? Uh, this is what the instructions came in. Uh, it's kind of nice if you sit down and you really pay attention to this. It tells you exactly what you do. You can't miss up how you put the screws in, okay, to, to uh, fasten these brackets. What did I do? They tell you to install this first and then put it on the bike. OK, um, I was like, huh, why do that? And, and I thought, well, maybe that's easy or whatever. I put the bracket on here on this base part. If you're reading on the website about how this thing's set up, I don't know how they do it, but they're when they call themselves Madstad Engineering, they are engineers. Boy, it's it, I love that term because this is engineered to get the buffeting off your helmet. OK, um, but anyway. Um, they said to put this on and then put it on the bike and then pl put the actual shield on. Again, I went with the 15 inch shield. I don't think I've mentioned that yet. I didn't go with a 13 recommend. I'll tell you how that worked out for me here in a minute. But the brackets here, um, very easy. Once you just ignore, you can look at this to how, how to set it up. But then just get a picture pulled up, okay? <laughs> That's going to tell you. Get a picture, go to their website, pull a picture of the man, because that way you can you can really see how this thing goes together. You'll see that the knobs are on the inside here. Uh, that's really, once you get the knobs are supposed to be on the inside, the whole thing goes together like a dream, okay? These two bolts are already snugged up at the thing. Don't make a mistake. I went ahead and loosened those because I thought I had to. Um, it wasn't moving up or down. These should be the only two knobs that you adjust uh, on a day-to-day -day basis, okay? These, are they say, are uh, at the factory. Um, uh, adjust at the factory, just be snug, but allow it to go up and down. You've got about three inches of play uh, on this, okay? About three inches of adjustment, I think is what it said, and it looks like that's about right. So... Um, so, uh, and I'll get to more of the adjustments here in a second. So yeah, just make sure that I went ahead and built the whole thing. Okay. Um, I did lean this up against the wall as if it was on the motorcycle. And then I put all four of these in as they suggested to do set up with the washers, the plastic washers on the outside, the rubber washers on the inside, and it just flowed. It went right together. Okay. Came out here, of course, I pulled off uh, many, many motors, and I got to tuck my thing in there. Yeah, I still got some work to 
do on that. Uh, but I pulled off these things. You can, there's tons of videos on how to take off the windshield and this front fairing. And uh, so I, I, that's a snap for me. I've done it so many times on different goal wings. But um, so I pulled that off, had that off, and then just came up here by myself, didn't even have a helper, and installed this shield completely put together. It worked out fantastic. Um, so, so now let's talk about real life experience. So I take it out today and I had it in the very lowest setting, which is not where it's at now. It's actually up about halfway of the adjustment that you can do. Okay. I had it completely down and it looked really like a regular, completely regular shield when you do that. I think it does right now. But this part right here slips down three inches on the 15, and or about an inch and a half is what I have it up right now. So it's down even a little bit more. It looks great, okay? I went with the medium gray because I knew there was a possibility I was going to be looking through the windshield, and I wanted to have an all-around windshield. I wanted to use it all the time. Some people have summer. Some people have winter. Uh, my tax bracket doesn't let me have multiple shields, okay? Uh, so I wanted something that was going to get me around all year round, and I think I found it, okay? So I went with the lowest setting. They give you a great chart here, and once you get to how to use this, you set this up on the back, and they want you to be around 55 to 60 degree angle. So when you put this up against the shield, if that arrow's straight, whatever arrow you're looking at is straight up, that's the angle that you're at. Mine is perfectly almost right at a 60 right now. And that's about at the, well, and I guess I'm sure with the up and the down, um, that's about probably close to being in the middle of this forward adjustment. You can read more about this on other websites, but it allows you to come up here about an inch of uh, this way, moving it, tilting it up and down, and you got about three inches of literally bringing the shield up and down, okay, for this F6B model. <clears throat> so, um, I had it perfectly when I first started out. I had a five mile, mile an hour kind of cross slash tailwind uh, on the highway. Now, I'm checking this on the highway. That's where I want it. That's where I get all that helmet noise. But I noticed when I had it in the lowest position at a 60 degree angle driving out of the neighborhood, already I could tell I'd lost about probably 70 to 80 percent of the buffeting <clears throat> that I was experiencing with the clear view, with the bagger shield. OK, that was already gone. So at a low speed, probably up to 40, 40, 40, you're probably going to be in the lowest uh, 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 setting on this. OK. Keep on that lowest setting. So the first thing I want to, I noticed is, and everybody says, don't, you can't, you know, you don't want to look through the shield. You don't want to look through the shield. Well, let me tell you the optics on this shield and not having a recurve on it like other things have to have to get that wind to do what you want it to do. Phenomenal. Okay. <laughs> you don't have to have, you're looking, if you look through the shield on this, it's not like looking through any other shield you've looked through. Okay, so first off, I don't care if I have to look through the shield, especially if it's going to be more comfort for my passenger. Okay, um, and I, again, I think I'm going to add some notes down at the bottom when I get uh, the wifey on the back. It's cold today. I mean, it's 40. I was riding in feels like probably 45 uh, doing 80 miles an hour to test this thing out. <clears throat> um, so anyway, back to the first setting. First setting, lowest, 60 degrees. Great pulling out of the thing. Had that, had a four mile an hour. Then I jump on the highway. I've got that five mile an hour tailwind. I would probably say 80 to 85% of the normal loud helmet buffeting, uh, turbulence called by, caused by semi, probably 80% of it was gone right then. It was gone. And for me, especially, I drove, uh, what, 2,300 miles in four days when I first got the motorcycle. And to think about what, and somebody on a website, a great F6B website or forum, uh, a guy told me he had the same 19-inch bagger and what he had been putting up with. I think he had that thing on for like three years. What he had been experienced for that long, 
he, he, he realized it the minute he put one of these on. And uh, he went with the 15 inch too, but he's 6'2". But he was real happy with his too. <clears throat> and really got me thinking about getting one of these uh, Mad Stads. So um, pull out, I'm doing and about 80%. I mean, I'm pulling up. I, it was, I, I was trying to also feel what else was getting affected with the wind, okay? This shield going across here, is about 28 and a half inches at the longest point. My other one um, was right at 30 inches. So you got about an inch and a half uh, less on here. And I'm thinking, okay, that's gonna get my arms colder. It's gonna get my hands colder, possibly, okay? Because this maybe didn't come out quite as much here and give me more hand protection, okay? So I'm thinking my hands could be cold, maybe get some more wind on my body. Well, I got to say, I might have felt a little bit on my arms. I can't really think. I never really thought about the wind that I was getting on my arms with the bagger shield on, okay? So it might be just the same. I might be just dreaming it up, okay? Maybe it felt a little bit on the arms. Did I get colder? No. Did my hands get colder? Absolutely not. Because I was, I test these gloves out and did a couple of video on these gloves, uh, these uh, Fly Igniter 2s, and my hands felt, I think they might have even been a little bit warmer, guys, okay, than they were. I didn't even turn them on, and I was out on the road for probably about 30 minutes highway speed. Uh, then I did accidentally hit one, turned it on, it felt good, so I went ahead and put it in the first level on both both of them, but I don't think I really even needed it. Okay, again, uh, feels like around 40, 43 uh, degrees, uh, 45 degrees, something like that, 45 degrees. So <clears throat> bottom line, I loved it, okay? <clears throat> but I pulled off, I've got adjustments, let's adjust. Okay, so I pulled off and I adjusted uh, this and I moved it up higher to say, okay, well, I got rid of 80, 80% 80 of the buffeting. Let's push this forward a little bit. And I think that would bring me more into the 55 range, which is still the sweet spot moving it. Oh, actually, it, it had to move back. So I was going more to the 65. I was going to the 65 by pushing it back out, got back on the highway, more buffeting. Okay, still about 70% of it gone from the other shields that I tried, but more buffeting right away. I could tell it, okay? Next thing I did, pulled over. <laughs> After about 10 minutes of that, I uh, go ahead and adjust these, pull the screws. You just unscrew these now, and because these are just snug down here. You just unscrew both of these about two, three turns, they tell you. It works fine. Once it gets loosened up, I went ahead and raised it up and did my, um, again, you can see there, the it's it's got about three inches of travel there. So I raised it up about half of the travel, okay? Because I knew I was going to be going back into the wind, this five mile an hour tailwind I just had, now I'm going to be going back into it, okay? About 15 minutes into my, 15, uh, 20 minutes into my ride, now I'm gonna be returning about the same amount of time. I wanted to see how this thing handled that wind. Oh, I'm going to back up for a second. I want to talk about your view. That's what everybody wants to know about. And I wanted somebody to tell me what I was going to be seeing at six foot tall, 33 inseam, in the lowest setting on this 15 inch shield, set at optimal. Optimal, I'm saying, um, God, I hope I said that right. Um, at the best possible uh um, degrees and the le least buffeting. So I went to the 60 degrees. And people are like, God dang, I don't want to look through the shield. I don't want to look through the shield. Well, <laughs> if I'm standing, if I'm sitting on the bike and I'm looking uh, down at that pogo stick, I'm going to look through the shield, okay? But if I'm in real life and I've got it in the lowest setting, six foot, 33 inseam, down on the lowest one, knocking out about 80% of my turbulence. And this is one thing Clearview did that I really liked is you're looking out about 70 feet in front of you. You can look out about 70 feet in front of you and you see the road. You're looking over the shield with that kind of range that you're seeing potholes or whatever. Just 70 feet in front of the bike. That's 
That's perfect for me. I don't care if I have to look over in the shield just, you know, up close and stuff like that. You're always going to deal with that a little bit. Okay. Um, but I'm looking where I feel, am I looking over the shield? Yes, I'm looking over the shield because I want to see 70 feet out in front of me over the shield. It was perfect. Okay, perfect. Um, would I probably, and I, and I might lower that down to get it back, but let us let me tell you what happened when I went to the higher level. So I raise it up an inch and a half. Again, keeping it now at that 60 degree perfect spot, which it's sitting at right now. Now, I increase that over the, over the top of the windshield, probably went from 70 to about 150 feet, okay? But that's where I, that's, that's my line of sight now. Now, some people can deal with that. I loved it. I didn't mind it a bit, okay? Now, at nighttime, uh, would I, you know, because of the medium gray, I don't even know if that's going to affect me that much, but would I lower it down just for a little bit of safety, so yeah, uh, if I was riding at night, might I lower it down? I don't know yet. I haven't rode at night with it yet, so I can't answer that question. Again, I'll put some notes down at the bottom and some comments, okay, on, on if I change that down. But right now, here's what happened. After I raise that up and I'm going back into now a five mile an hour uh, uh, wind, I look down at the speed dial and I'm doing 85 in a 65. Okay, now normally I'm 14 miles an hour over. I had an old police officer friend of mine a long time ago say, stay 14 miles an hour over, you're safe. Most uh, state uh, patrolmen are looking for 15 and above. You didn't hear me tell you that. Okay, but uh, so I, I look down though and I'm usually at about 79 on a 65. Here I am already at 85. Gosh, guys. <laughs> And why is because it felt like I was doing about 70, 75. I mean, I heard the radio clearer than I ever have. My wind noise now, the buffeting is probably 5%. Down to, it's 95% gone. Okay, yeah, you're going to have a little bit of stuff, you know, from, from the trucks and the stuff up in front. But I have to think if I was on a smooth highway road at 85 miles an hour, I wouldn't have probably felt anything. Um, and trying to stay calm here. I hope you can appreciate that. <laughs> but uh, it, it was it was just, if you're like me and you and you went through windshield after windshield and you paid shipping costs and back returns and all the crap, the Clearview I had to spring 28 bucks and they were in Florida, I think too. But I had to come up with the return shipping. They don't credit you for that. I don't blame them. But you're going to pay to try these shields out, okay? Stop right here. This is where you stop and order it. And don't think of anything else. Put this on the bike. Um, Mad's dad's not paying me a dime to tell you this, okay? This is just from the heart. Um, I don't want you to go through what I went through, okay? Awesome bike. And believe me, if you think that it doesn't look good, what it does for you on the bike you're going to grow to love how it looks really fast, okay? Um, and now, I'm actually thinking it's cool. And if you look at other people's uh, comments and stuff like that, they actually get comments that this actually looks great on this bike, okay? And some of the other sport bikes, when they put the mats on, they say, man, that looks like it was made for that bike. It makes it look more technical and stuff like that. Look at that. What's wrong with that? Nothing. All right, this black smoke shield thing here looks really super cool. It's really black, okay? But you never look through that, okay? Uh, and, and Unless you're looking at your front wheel or trying to stand up and look at that. Um, but let me think if there's anything else I left off. Guys, I think I covered everything. I think that's it. Um, Again, the, and they, they say that you can put regular cleaner on this. You don't have to worry about doing water on it like a lot of shields. Uh, watch what they, you can look at some type of acrylic that went on the space shuttles. You know how that goes <laughs> or whatever F4 fight, fighter pilots or whatever. They use the same stuff. Uh, you can read up on the technical stuff on it. This is just kind of real life. Uh, you can get uh, stats uh, all over the place on these. So, um, but uh, it is a really, the optics are beautiful. And again, when I was cruising home just now and I was looking through that shield, it was actually, <laughs> it's kind of strange, but it's better than looking over the shield. 
Does that make sense? It's so clear and it just improves your vision a little bit. It's almost like putting on a polarized lens uh, for your um, sunglasses. So do you, are you going to mind looking through that? Go with a little bit tall if you're thinking about uh, 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 what I just went over there. If you're okay with looking over the shield at 70 feet and you're six foot, go with a 15 inch. Just do it. Okay, I spent, uh, Larry spent a lot of time, I believe his name is Larry at Madstad, and we talked about it for about 20 minutes, okay, uh, about my selection on this, and I'm glad I went with a 15. I do not see myself returning it um, based on everything that I had today. This is the shield, okay, um, which is an interesting question. If you did have to return it, and I was going to check with this, are these holes set up the same way that they could just send you this part and you just ship this part back versus paying the big box shipping? I mean, when the box that they came in, you know, it could be uh, a lot more money than if you just had to send this part of it back. So that's one thing you might want to check out if you're kind of in between on what size you need to get um, with uh, Madstab. Maybe I'll find that out, put it in my comments too. But Guys, uh, that's it. If you got any questions, hit me up. Um, but I think the, I'm going to clean this thing up. I haven't even put a, a rag on it yet. I'm going to shine this baby up, and uh, it's a keeper. That's it, YouTube. Have a good one.